you mentioned about how playing with your brother at the University of Cincinnati and he possibly saved your career. You had gotten into some trouble. I think if I'm not mistaken, he had already gone. You had gotten kicked off the team. And he comes back and he asked the coach to put you back on the team. And then your senior year, you catch 45 passes, 722 yards, eight touchdowns, first team all Big East. But the previous two seasons, you had two touchdowns, 153 yards. Why were you able to take off your senior year? What 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 click? What 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 was different? Like I so so the process, the, the timeline of events was my my sophomore year, I had the wildcat. My second year in college, I had the wildcat, which was my ended up being my retro freshman year. Um, and then that next year, I got kicked off the team. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I when I got kicked off the team, that year was my brother's senior year. He, I mean, okay. the entire off season, he was begging the coaches to give me another chance and um, set. Uh, a list of things that I had to accomplish to be able to um, reap the benefit of playing football again at the University of Cincinnati, uh, or appreciate the, the opportunity of playing football again at the University of Cincinnati. And um, I'm forever thankful for that conversation. I mean, it took a lot of a lot of guts for him to be able to go in there and put his name on the line uh, for myself, uh, knowing that you know I threw this scholarship away and down the drain like it didn't mean nothing to me. And um, and it was it was a very it was it was a moment where I had to grow up. I had to grow up and become uh, a man, or a, a man of, of my own mistakes. So uh, because up to that point, it was always, oh yeah, I could get away with this, I could get away with that. Well, mm -hmm. like my father says, the bullshit always catches up. Excuse my language, but bullshit always going to catch up. If you're out here doing the wrong things, it's going to catch up to you. Just because right. that's just not how you live. And I, I'm all, I, like I said, I'm always here for the fun. So I, I'm a very passionate guy and I want to do the right things. Fun just sometimes overrode that as, at a young age. And uh, to have him put his, his name on the line for me and, and to give the coaches enough, you know, confidence that I was going to be able to be that guy for them. Uh, I, I was able to, you know, step into a locker room, be a leader. Um, it still took you know, a process and a group of men to help me and guide me in the right direction. I'm just thankful for everybody at University of Cincinnati that not, not only gave me that chance, but guided me in the right direction of my brothers at the forefront. Man. It's funny because Andy Reid drafted your brother at Philly. Mm -hmm. He gets terminated. He goes to Kansas City. He turns and drafted and draft you. Now, there's a story. I don't know how true it is. You can confirm or deny this. That after Andy talked to you, he asked to speak to your brother and asked, is he going to mess this up? <laughs> That's the truth, man. It's the God honest truth, man. I, when I tell you, I had never been more excited. It was it was like a roller coaster of a call, and, all, and it all happened within like 15 seconds. I get the call. It's a Missouri number. I'm thinking I'm going to St. Louis. Shout out to Jeff Fisher and everybody over there, but I did not want to go to St. Louis. At the time. <laughs> the Rams did not have the recipe for success. And, uh, and, and actually, what I didn't know is that the Chiefs didn't have that recipe for success either. They actually had a right. worship, which was 2-14 and 14 the year before. So Andy Reid comes in, uh, drafts me with his second pick, and, uh, and I, I answer the phone thinking it's, it's going to be St. Louis. He answers the phone, hey, how are you doing? Is this Travis? I say, yes. He said, this is Andy Reid with the Kansas City Chiefs. And I'm talking about my – Woo! Let's go, baby. I'm ready to rock and roll. You know what I mean? I got one of the greatest coaches to ever do this. I'm ready to go, man. And right. He immediately takes it right back to the floor. Listen, man. This is this is serious. This is no no goofing around. It was a, a, a whole lot of words that I would rather not repeat. But he basically said, "Do not screw this up." Right. This is a serious opportunity. And uh, he was asking me if I was going to mess it up. And they said, all right, put your brother on the phone. And I was like, how did he know my brother was right here? I didn't even <laughs> get it in my eyes. He already knows. So, and sure enough, you just see my brother get on the phone. I'm staring at my brother like, what are you going to say? You know what I mean? They're like, oh, I hope he doesn't say anything bad. And he's just like, yeah, nope, nope, I got you. I got you. And it was almost like he was asking my brother to make sure that, that I knew what I was getting myself into. Right. And it, reiterated and uh, at the at the end of the day I think it was something he was he was just telling him like I need you to make sure that this dude does not screw this up because I will kick both your ass. The the year you were drafted, Tyler Eifert went in the first round, the 21st pick to Cincinnati. Zach Ertz went second, 35th pick to Philly. Gavin Escobar, 47 to the Cowboy, Vance McDonald, second round, 55th pick to the San Francisco 49ers. 
what's going through your mind? You're like, I'm better than all them cats. And I'm going to show you. I just, it just, because that's how it was. Trav, all the receivers that went before me, I'm like, because I went to the bowl games. I don't know if you, but I went to the blue gray game, went to the East West Shrine game. I'm watching these guys. And I remember calling my brother, I said, man, I'm better than all these cats. And I see them going off the board before me. I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. What did I miss? Man, I'll tell you what. It, you have to have that mentality. You have to have that confidence within yourself to know that you can go out there and have success no matter where you are, no matter who's in front of you. And, uh, and, and that's just, that's just the, the competitive mind state that I've, that I've always had. Um, but what it really did was it made me dislike the guys that, that, that were taken in front of me. I mean, Zach a great guy, unbelievable guy. We've ended up becoming good friends over the years. Uh, Tyler Eifert, the exact same way. Uh, but it, what it, it made me do was it made me, you know, gain this competitiveness to, to every single day, uh, kind of, I don't know, mentally be crazy enough to, to outperform somebody that you don't even know what they're doing. Right. So every single day I told myself I'm going to work harder than every tight end in, the, in, this, in this league. I didn't know what Gronk was doing. I didn't know what Ertz was doing. I didn't know what anybody else was doing. All I could do was control myself and my process and what I was doing and, uh, and have confidence that I was going to keep getting better in that. And, um, man, throughout the years, it's been awesome to know all those guys. Vance McDonald, another guy that I, I absolutely love and have a, a tremendous respect for. Gavin Escobar ended up coming and playing for the Chiefs for a little bit. Um, I, I, what it did for me was initially start the, the competitive edge to be the greatest. At, 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 at least try to be the greatest me. And, uh, and that's where it started, man. You know what to do. Hit the subscribe button to become an official member of Club Shay Shay, where we always do something before two something.